All right, we're here today with Lucas Bryant, who plays Nathan Warnos on Haven. We're talking about season three. Yes. Is there anything you want to tease initially about season three? Uh, well, um, in general, season three kicks butt. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a tease I have for you. Now, I just saw some of the, I saw the first episode and I saw a montage of, of a piece of each episode through the season that they showed at the rap party and it's really exciting. <laughs> it's really beautiful and way scarier and a lot darker and just bigger and more awesome. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Well, this season particularly, the, um, there's been a much larger cast. They brought in all these new characters. Yeah. What can you share about the new characters joining? Right. So, um, well, I don't know how much I should tell you about these people, but um, first of all, it was, we had a great group of, of new actors that fit right in with us and, and got along super well and brought something special, each of them, and a nice new dynamic, it's particularly like um, there's Dorian Missick plays uh, Tommy Bowen, who's a new cop in town, and, and he's a city cop, he's from Boston, he's an outsider, and so initially his take on the town I thought was 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 really cool because we we had that uh, we had someone come in and say like what you know like <laughs> are you crazy <laughs> yeah are you are you kidding me and and so we had this sort of I think that was exactly what the show needed was someone from the outside to remind us that this was all a bit completely messed up and so that was like a really fresh take on Haven from an outsider and, and he was a, a great guy, a very cool guy. And um and Bree Williamson who plays Claire uh in most of season three is a lovely person and a fantastic actress and she was uh, again a sort of um a different kind of character than we'd seen in Haven up until now. So you got a new perspective through her and Kate Kelton, who played Jordan, uh, who I had a lot to do with, was uh, did a fantastic job. And she's um, her character lets us into this new side of Haven that we explore a lot in season three. That was was hinted at, I guess, in in the end of season two. But it's a whole new sort of layer that that becomes. Uh, that that is very Im, Im, important and, and large and relevant in season three. So I think fans will be hugely thankful for these new characters and what they reveal. Are you talking a little bit about the guard? I am, yes. So they're a little prevailing on Twitter these days. They get everybody riled up. <laughs> I wouldn't know because I'm a grandmother and I'm rarely on there, but I have mm. made a solemn vow that I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna be on there soon, somehow. I don't know, I'll have to get someone to set it up for me because I have no idea, I don't even, mm. I've never, I've, w I've once been on the internet and I understand that it's a big, uh, <laughs> crazy thing out there. So we're gonna be seeing Nathan join the guard or is he gonna kinda just keep tabs on the guard? Uh, right, good question. I don't know if I <laughs> should answer that because then we would all, no one would be allowed to watch this video for many months. Um, but yeah, it's something that uh, the guard, the guard is very important to the story of season three and holds a lot of potential answers to what's going on in Haven. It's something bigger than, than we had any idea about. And by the end of the season, um, there's a, there's quite a there's quite a large reveal, especially at the end of the season, about this guard. So yeah, Nathan thinks Nathan knows that there's something to be learned there. Um, he doesn't know exactly what, but but yeah, he puts himself in new and somewhat dangerous places. For Is he his starting career. to regret having that tattoo right away? <laughs> I don't know that he regrets it, um, <laughs> but but he is. Yeah, he is forced to examine what it means, particularly to him. 
Yeah, that tattoo kind of shocked the hell out of everybody as we were watching the second season finale. We're like, right. where did that come from? I know, it was a great, yeah, it was a great reveal at the end. Um, and and we get into why he got that in, um, you know, quickly in season three. We understand those motivations, but then, um, but then it 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 beca it becomes a lot more uh, useful than he necessarily anticipated. Cool. Well, he was also forewarned by his the ghost of his father a little bit um, in the second season finale about not getting involved with Audrey. Right. Is that something he's going to heed the advice on, or is he going to be like, screw it, I'm doing whatever I want? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that that is, that, that he's able to heed any advice about Audrey. Um, she, you know, his relationship with her is um, all sorts of things that, that he can't help. So, so I think it's something that he... Uh, that advice he obviously questions and and we do learn uh, a little bit I guess why why that was why that suggestion was made by his dad well the chief his dad <laughs> he also has an interesting role now that he's um, kind of the chief of the entire town and watching over the troubled either to protect them or to protect everybody else from the troubled. Is he kind of finding himself kind of morally conflicted on how to deal with them? Yeah. Um, I think that was a, you know, that was a big question in season two uh, for him uh, was what, you know, what side he was going to choose and how he was going to, how he was going to deal with, with these people being you know, one of them, um, and and in season two he was much more conflicted and reluctant. And in season three he uh, he makes much more clear choices. It doesn't mean that he can't perhaps change his mind, but but yeah, he's um, in season three things are. He's 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 forced to step up and and uh, stand for something. Well, interesting enough, it seemed like um, Nathan and Duke had a role reversal starting off in the third season, where Nathan was always kind of questioning things beforehand. He was very decisive in the third season, where mm -hmm. Duke suddenly was always decisive beforehand, started questioning things and having moral quandaries a bit more in the third season. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely true. I hadn't really picked up on that because I'm not a very smart person. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I guess Nathan Nathan wrestled more in the second season with his fate or you know what it meant to be um, who he was and and in, in season three he takes a lot he takes a lot more initiative where where Duke for the first time well, I mean you know maybe Duke was always a questioning guy but he blustered through that um, but he's forced to he's forced to, to question his fate a lot more in season three, yeah. Well, interesting enough, Nathan's trouble, it doesn't always seem like it's a big trouble for him. He's adapted to it really well. Yeah. Is that because he's lived with it his whole life or he just accepts it? Yeah, um, it's, uh, right, well, he's, li he's lived with it off and on his whole life, so, um, so yeah, I guess he's, he's much more, he's, uh, well, I don't know that he's comfortable, but he's but he's used to it. So, um, occasionally there's moments when it it uh, is an advantage for him. Uh, mostly, it's it's not. But but yeah, he doesn't. Um, I guess uh, particularly by season three, he, yes, he is. He has accepted what he is and who he is. And, and uh, you know, when we met him. In the beginning of the first season, he was he was much more in denial about his situation and the situation in town, and uh, and that is no longer the case. And so yeah, for Nathan, it's been a real um, coming of age story, I guess. And in in, uh, in season three, he's he has done that. He's made that transformation. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems like he's kind of. I don't know, pinpointed Audrey as kind of his drug of choice because he can feel her. Mm -hmm. 
is that like something he's going to be addressing further, whether he needs to determine whether or not it's, it's that he's found an addiction or whether he's got genuine feelings? How does he sort that out? Hmm. Uh, well, I think that he... I don't think there's any question that he has genuine feelings for her, you know, regardless of that, of, of whether or not that's because of the amazing, potentially amazing effect she has on him physically. <laughs> I mean, just the fact that he can, you know, that he can actually feel her touch. Um, but, but more so just because she's been such a great friend for him, you know, and, and he's grown so much because of her and with her. Um, I don't think that regardless of whether or not he can, he can feel her, that's, uh, that relationship is, is, is real and he puts a lot of value in that. As you were doing those scenes with Emily, was it hard to remember to either touch her at certain times because that's what the character would do or avoid touching her? Yeah, that's something that comes up a lot, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, in, in season, I guess, first of all, in season three, they, the, in the, in the first and second season, a lot was made of, of each time there was any, uh, physical contact between the two of them. And I wouldn't say that that has changed in season three. That can change because it is a big thing regardless, um, whenever it happens. But, but yeah, in season three now, I, I, I guess they're much more, um, comfortable with each other, uh, although there are some, definitely some, some speed bumps throughout the season for their relationship. Um, but it comes up mostly in, in just silly, um, I mean, if we're, if we're, uh, if it's an action e sequence or something, you know, and we need to like pull each other through something or, or, or stop each other from doing something, you know. Um, there's there's generally that moment where you know we do that and then realize no, I can't um, actually grab you there, um, <laughs> or I can, but if I did, then it would be this whole other thing. So we you know have to reassess the the physical contact. But it's you know through the it's it's skin to skin contact, which is <laughs> the thing that uh, that works for him. This is a strange <laughs> strange sentence. Um, so, you know, you can get around those situations by grabbing each other's shoulders or sleeves or something like that, you know. Did that cause a lot of reshoots when you guys were filming? <laughs> <laughs> Not too many reshoots, thankfully. <laughs> um, no. But yeah, there is, uh, there is more, there is much more physical contact between Nathan and Audrey in season three, for sure. Does he still get that same euphoric reaction when he gets that contact? Absolutely, yeah. But, um... <sighs> There are some moments, I guess, where it, um, where it's not uh, just about that because I, because he's, I guess, both of, both of them know what that. You know, it's not the first or the second or the fifth time that it's happened. And, We're getting used to um, it. <laughs> getting a little bit more used to it's it. It's temporary you know? there. Yeah. Okay. Again, with the filming angle, working with like Adam and with Eric, it seems like you guys have a wonderful, warm camaraderie. It must be really Ooh. hard to do scenes together. <laughs> Sorry, who? Adam Copeland and Eric Balfour. <laughs> you no, co starts. <laughs> doesn't ring a bell. Adam and Eric. No, I don't. Um, hmm. Don't remember them whatsoever. Don't, no. <laughs> Eric's going to be so happy. No, nope, still nothing. Adam, oh, those guys. <laughs> those guys from the show. Yeah. Uh, Duke and Dwight. Duke and <laughs> the Dwight. The double D's. Right. <laughs> the double D's. Wow. <laughs> they probably Wow. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> How hard is it to work with them? Because it seems like you guys have such a warm camaraderie. Yeah, it's not really that hard. Uh, they're pretty fantastic dudes, uh, the Double Ds. And <laughs> they, you know, um, Eric and I have known each other for a long time and could not love the guy more, although I do often hate him <laughs> as well. Uh, he's, he's fantastic person and actor and uh and such a pleasure and joy to do scenes with because his you know duke is um 
kind of a clown, you know, as far as Nathan's concerned anyway. But but just as an actor, Nathan's straight guy, I think, works so well with Duke with Duke's uh, ridiculous persona. That I have I have a lot of fun doing scenes with him, working with him. Um, and then Adam is just really uh, a lovely dude too, a great person and and a fantastic actor. And I think he really gets to do some some cool stuff in season three. And and I was impressed. And I think fans will be happy and excited with his part too. Does there have to be a lot of reshoots? And you're working with them. Reshoots? Uh, no, we. What, what is this with reshoots? Um, no, we don't. Uh, we don't need to reshoot much. Uh, I guess the parts where, because they are both so magnetic, <laughs> I'm often drawn to them physically, and so I need to hold myself back. Um, no. That's a challenge. But uh, but no, we have a we have a great time. I could not be any more lucky with the people I get to work with every day you know, when we shoot Haven. It's it's really special and I'm just yeah, thankful for all of them. How much of this next season is going to be the search for the Colorado kid? Um, how much of season three? Yeah. <sighs> A lot. A lot. Big mm -hmm. storyline there. Huh? Yeah, the Colorado kid factors largely into season three. Um, in ways you can't eat, well maybe you can because you know, but in ways you can't even <laughs> imagine. Any speculation? Nope. Can't offer nothing to Nothing. <laughs> um, he, she, it, the Colorado kid, will be around. Um, and a lot will be revealed about this particular person or thing or animal. <laughs> um, Never know in Haven. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think in, in general, the um, fans are gonna, going to be, hopefully, wowed by this season. A lot of, a lot of the, the mystery of Haven is, is revealed. Uh, you know, in the first two seasons, we, well, in the first season particularly, we, it was a very slow burn. And the second season, we got some bigger understanding of what was going on, but just the pace at which, um, answers are or, or some answers are given in season three is is something something that we haven't seen yet so i hope i hope that uh i hope that people are as excited as i am about those those is some really big stuff not that it answers everything um but all those little answers lead to bigger questions and at the by the end of the season that yeah um sort of the lid is blown right off yeah. <laughs> okay well this sounds like a good point to stop so thank you for your time today and tell you us got about it. haven <laughs> thank you